Um, well, our next talk here is going to be one that I know we've got a few folks who are super interested in. Uh, we've got Jen Fox, who is uh, currently with Domino's, but she also brings a background involving risk evaluation, which I think is really interesting when it comes to the human aspect that she's going to be talking about with social engineering. And I'll be honest, I don't know if you're going to mention this, Jen, but I noticed that you had a job that was a high-tech anthropologist. I've never seen those words together, and I'm fascinated, but I can already kind of have some ideas on how that might work its way into social engineering. So Thank you so much for uh, for joining us here today, and uh, I'm looking forward to your talk. Great, thank you, Phil. Um, thanks everyone for being here. I hope everybody is enjoying the summit so far. There are so many things to uh, to learn, and a ton of great content uh, today. I'm going to talk about social engineering, and let's see. There we go. Um, and there we go, there I am. Uh, so let's talk about social engineering. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about my background and how I got into InfoSec. Um, my name is Jen and uh, I hold a DEF CON black badge um, from DEF CON 23 for the um, winning the social engineering capture the flag competition. Uh, I've been a cybersecurity consultant uh, doing social engineering penetration testing, and currently I lead security education at Domino's. So that's a little bit about me. And a few things I love. I'll, so I'll start. I'll start here with things I love about social engineering, and we're going to learn about the, the whole process of it. But uh, I love the challenge of, of it and digging for the information and figuring out, seeing what I find, which is always fascinating, um, learning all kinds of things about different organizations and how they work. I love the analysis um, and uh, some of the things will, and some of the stories I'll, will give some color to, to this, but uh, in social engineering, you really need a, uh, a very good tolerance for uncertainty because you just never know. You never know what you're going to find, if you're going to find good information or no information. Um, when you walk into a place or call somebody, are you going to get somebody who will just let you in? Or are you going to get somebody who's really tough and is going to ask you a ton of questions? Who knows? You don't know. Things um, don't always go the way you imagine they will. Uh, and so you need to be very flexible about things. Um, uh, I'd say you need to have a love of learning, a lot of patience. Um, and uh, as uh, my husband likes to say, you, need, you also need to have unmitigated gall to be a social engineer. Because uh, you're asking you're asking people to do things that they probably should not be doing. They definitely should not be doing. Um, so Phil already mentioned um, so part of my background is uh, is a high tech anthropologist. That actually involved going and um, as part of uh, user interface design, uh, actually going and observing people doing doing a job. So instead of just uh, designing front end interfaces the way that I thought they should work based on my own logic or what I thought I knew. It involved going and actually really talking to people, learning about their processes, learning about why they did, did things or how things worked in their environments. And um, so that was a, a lot of people in process. And uh, today, in, the, in today's summit, um, you'll probably hear from a lot of the presenters about their paths into InfoSec. And uh, mine is a little bit different in that it's not deeply technical. Um, I've taken technical courses. Um, I've taken cybersecurity courses and coding courses. And um, that's just not my thing. Uh, I've always been about people and process. Um, I've been in IT for over 30 years, and a lot of that has been around learning how 
business processes work, learning how the technology supports those, learning what people do. And sometimes it's what you expect. Sometimes it's not what you expect. And sometimes it's not what you hope either. <laughs> so um, uh, much of my experience has been in uh, uh, writing and training and analysis. So I've relied on a lot of communication skills and working with people over all of these years. And so enough about that. Uh, let's talk about social engineering. So what is that? Um, so this, this is the definition that I like from uh, Chris Hadnagy's uh, book, The Art of Social Engineering. Um, and it's the act of manipulating somebody else, a person to take an action that may or may not be in their best interest. And that's something that um, you can accomplish via any medium that's used to communicate with another human. Um, so think about all of the, the different things, uh, ways that you communicate with people, that's an opening for social engineering. Um, it can be in person, email, phone, text message, um, anything. Uh, and we've seen so much more of it in this last year. And it's an organized process. So we're actually going to dig in to um, the, how, how the whole process works. Um, a lot of people, sometimes um, you'll hear other presenters uh, say that, uh, um, have a very casual approach to it. Um, but really, you need to approach it in an organized way, um, a lot, especially a lot of um, social engineering isn't somebody just randomly deciding to pick up a phone and make a phone call or just walk up and suddenly do a thing. Um, and particularly in cybersecurity, it's, um, this is often done con uh, via consulting. Some internal teams, uh, some companies actually have their own internal red teams who will do some social engineering. Um, but a lot of social engineering is uh, penetration testing that's done as a consultant. So you have some sort of a goal in talking about it from our uh, defense perspective. Uh, your client hired you for a reason. They want to know how much of a threat social engineering is to their environment, for example. So, so you have um, a goal. Maybe they want to see if you can get credentials or get access to unsecured or um, unauthorized access to secured locations. Maybe they want you um, to see if you can uh, get people to um, give you access or you can get system access or install software and machines. There's all kinds of things. So you're going to do research, a lot of research, and there's whole, um, a whole discipline called OSINT or um, uh, that, we'll, that uh, we'll talk about it a little bit, but essentially it's your, it's your research. Uh, it's your open source intelligence. So you're digging around to see what you can find and then analyzing that. So you're going to dig up a bunch of stuff. You're going to figure out what you can do with it. Um, and you might find a lot of stuff. You might not find much at all. And then you do something, right? Based on your analysis, you decide where you have the best chances that will help you also meet your goals. And you give it a shot. And it works or it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, uh, you kind of go back to the drawing board and see what you learned and do some additional analysis. And then you try again. And um, in general, social engineering is not the, the end in itself. It's a means to another end. Social engineering is usually the toehold into um, uh, deeper uh, exploits. So it might may be getting system access, but then you pivot um, and criminals also pivot into um, other more technical attacks and um, that you'll learn about in some of the other sessions here. So the research, um, as, I, as I mentioned, um, 
the open source intelligence or OSINT um, is, is basically one of the first things you do. Uh, you have a company that or an organization that you are uh, performing a test for, and what can you find out? Sometimes a client will give you some information to work with. A lot of times they won't. And you need to start digging around. Uh, what can you find? Sometimes you find a lot of information right on the company's website, looking at their news, their events, um, what's happening in, in uh, that company's world. Social media is always a um, pretty uh, rich source for all kinds of information. I have actually found um, pictures of desks. I always I love finding uh, like scrolling through Instagram, places like that. Um, and I have found amazing stuff just scrolling through Instagram. Pictures of people's uh, workstations or their desktops, where I can see what uh, their machine is unlocked. I can see what software they're using. I have actually seen um, uh, sticky notes with passwords on screens in a picture on Instagram. Um, so you can find all kinds of stuff. Uh, I find badge pictures all the time. In fact, when I was doing the social engineering uh, capture the, the flag, the year that I won um, in, at, uh, at DEF CON, I found so many different badge pictures, close up badge pictures. Um, and all different kinds of them that I actually made a special appendix to my report. There were so many. I found the employee badge, the contractor badge, the uh, consultant who's there for a week and you don't wanna have to keep badging them in badge, the person who is uh, only granted access to conference room number one for the next three hours badge. I, I found all kinds of stuff just laying around. So social media is a, definitely a great place to look. LinkedIn, of course, gives lots of information. Uh, I also look at news and current events. Um, just And this, this past year, the pandemic has certainly provided uh, a lot for um, malicious social engineers to work with in current events. Um, you know that uh, absolutely there is um, malware, social engineering stuff going on around vaccines because that's, uh, the, that is the current news item. And um, as you do research, you can do, do it manually. So just start Googling and you, you'll be amazed. There's often a lot of stuff out there. Um, and, uh, but then there are also different uh, tool sets you can use. Uh, so that you can uh, automate or speed up your process. Um, that is the, the Social Engineers Toolkit, or SET, is part of the uh, Kali Linux, and that has tons of uh, tools in it. Um, for example, the Harvester is one that you would use to scrape for email addresses from a certain domain. Um, so instead of just picking through uh, and trying to find all of that yourself, it can go and scoop up a whole bunch of them for you. So, um, and, and I usually use a combination of those things. Um, and then once you do your, uh, your research, then it's time for analysis. And you may feel like you're finding just a lot of really tiny uh, pieces of information, but that's what the analysis is all for. Uh, you see in, in this illustration, you see it, you can definitely tell what the picture is, but it's made of all of these tiny little bits of the picture. And that's how I think about doing, the, uh, doing that analysis is um, you go and you gather up all kinds of stuff, whatever you can find, and just and, and then you have to sift through it and see what's there and see what stuff, what things relate to other things. Um, and uh, work just start working your way through it. Now, 
as you do your analysis and you're trying, what you have to do is not only what did I find? Did I find inappropriately exposed documents or information? Because sometimes you'll definitely find things laying around um, just publicly available that should not be out there. Um, and it may be personnel information. Uh, it might be installation files for software used for the, the company, for, used for um, imaging company machines. Um, I've found those laying around. Um, sometimes you find things that definitely should not be publicly accessible, but they are. Um, and uh, you also need to start figuring out, well, all right, I found a bunch of information, but what am I gonna do now? How am I actually going to approach my goal? How am I going to um, get access to this building? Or how am I going to create a, an email campaign that um, is, uh, is one that makes sense, is appropriate to the environment. And so you have to like, kind of brainstorm what, what you can do with what you have and what you've learned. But um, you also, as you're you know, brainstorming, sometimes it, you could, it gets really fun coming up with all kinds of crazy ideas. And it's really important that um, you know for yourself what things uh, are legal, what is legal to do. Um, what's ethical and is what is your idea going to help your client? So um, there are things that, so I'll, I'll tell you that like the craziest suggestions that have ever come up during um, when I was work, working with, with clients to do social engineering tests for them, um, all of the, the ideas that were really ridiculous uh, came uh, came from the clients like, hey, can you pretend to be from the Federal Reserve? Uh, no, no, I can't, that's not legal. So not doing that. Um, so you, you need to know for yourself where those boundaries are. Also, um, if you do a quick Google search for um, pen, uh, pen testers jailed, there was uh, an, an incident where some testers who uh, were, were contracted by a state government, they were getting physical access to, um, it was in a county building and uh, there were politics at, at play in, in that situation, but they ended up arrested and in jail for a few days. And, and it was, um, the charges against them were eventually dropped, um, but, uh, you need you need to again not not rely on other people always having your best interests in in mind. Um, it's uh, I see that somebody just posted in the hallway that uh, the that um, story. So that is an interesting one to read and and think about. Um, or if a, you have a client that says, um, I want you to try to get physical access to, to our location. Yeah, that's, that's pretty typical um, for on-site physical social engineering engagements. But um, if they own the building, then you can, you know, they can, you can get permission to try to access that building. If they're just a tenant in a, a, a building that has a whole, whole bunch of other businesses in it, then they can't actually give you permission. They don't own that building. They can't give you permission to break into the building as a whole if they are if they just rent a, a portion of it. So um, you need to really um, you know, think about and uh, kind of watch out for yourself. Uh, I also had a hospital client that made a suggestion about uh, pulling fire alarms. Heck no, I am not pulling a fire alarm in a hospital. So thinking about like the, the ethics of that, um, yeah, would, uh, would a, a criminal do that? Well, maybe, maybe they would, um, but uh, that's not that's not always the the point of what we're we're doing. We want to give 
companies uh, an idea and help them understand their risk, but we're not there to create more risk for them in the process. Um, that's generally way, way out of scope. So that's so thinking about, again, the ethics of what you're being asked to do. Um, also, when I come up with ideas for uh, different pretexts, I just, um, if, the, if it's one that I think might cause issues uh, or be hard for my client to explain to their boss, I always run it by them uh, ahead of time. Hey, here's, here's a, this is the, the idea I have. Here's the email I wanna send out to people in your organization. Are you okay with that? Um, here are the areas of your building we are planning to, to access and here's how, what we're planning to do. Is that okay with you? They always say yes, uh, but I want them to have um, really uh, have the option because after the consulting engagement is done and I'm off to the, to the next one, they're the ones who have to explain it to their boss or maybe an unhappy uh, counterpart. So, um, so, it, so it's very important to think, think it through and maybe run, run this by people. Um, so you've figured something out. Now you're going to actually try, uh, try something. So you're going to make a phone call, walk in, send out those emails, text messages, whatever it is that you've come up with. Um, I actually have a couple recordings I'm going to share from, uh, Phone, phone tests that I did. And uh, you'll hear some spots where any identifying information was, um, it was removed. And uh, here we go. So here's, here's one. Thank you for having me have you. Hi there. I was on hold waiting for somebody. This is Julie from the and I need to do a scan mm -hmm. of your system I do to check scanning. for. Oh, okay, great. I'm checking. I'm doing a, a series of calls to set up scans to check for the heart bleed vulnerability. I don't know if you've seen that on the news in the last mm -hmm. couple weeks. No. Oh, okay. Well, it's about certificates and encryption and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we want to do scans of the machines to make sure that any, none of our patient information is in jeopardy. So I need it only take a couple minutes and shouldn't disrupt anything that you currently have running on the machine, mm -hmm. but I need the computer number in order to do that. It's T1. T1. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who had a question? Yeah, um, I wanted to do a question. That's if you want us to get records from your um, recent doctor you just left. Oh. That's if um, you don't have to. Hmm. Hello. Yeah, uh, it looks like that machine is susceptible, and I'm going to need to do a patch, and which is it's not hard, but I will need your. ID and password in order to get that installed right away. Okay. Is L yes. Capital okay. N. Lowercase Y A S I A seven zero seven. Uh capital M Y A S I A. I A and seven you said? Zero seven. You have your Zero set. No, I have a beneficiary number. Okay. Okay, you should be all set. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, Bye. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye. All right. So if we were all in uh, physically in a room together, I would say with a show of hands, you know, how many of you thought that that sounded really easy? Um, and usually everyone raises their, their hands because that uh, I was even surprised. Um, sometimes you think, all right, I'll give it a, I'll just give this a try. And like this one, she was like, yeah, here's my, here's my username and password. <laughs> and, um, and sometimes it happens just, just like that. You think, wow, 
that was uh, that was really amazing. And uh, didn't like didn't expect it to be, you know, uh, to be that easy. But now let's listen to so sometimes it's like that. People just let you in, they just give you the password. And then sometimes it's like the this next call. This is actually part of um, a more more complex thing that I was doing, but let's listen to the next one. It's not as easy. Thank you for holding him. I have you. Hi there. I was on hold waiting for somebody. This is Julie from the P and I need to do a scan mm -hmm. of your system I do to check scanning. for Oops. Oh, okay, great. I'm Hello. Hi there. This is Julie from United Hope. I'm doing a quick survey today to ask, what are you thankful for this holiday season? Um, this is a this is a work number. Yes. Yes. So what so um, why are you calling me at work to ask me a question like this? Uh, this is we're actually kicking off a partnership with for a new charity portal and I'm calling making calls from the list of numbers I was given by my supervisor. Okay, that you would have gotten from Yes. Interesting. Mhm. Mm Okay, and where are you from? United Hope. And where is United Hope based out of? Uh, United Hope is based out of uh, Minneapolis. Out of Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. And, and they're partnering with? Yes, yes. United Hope helps organizations increase the reach of their charity dollars. And so we're kicking off a, a partnership with and launching a new portal next week. So answers from this survey are going to be used for a contest that we're going to start next week. So I was given a list of numbers to call and just ask people what they're thankful for. Okay, by your supervisor that, do you know the contact person who gave your supervisor the list of numbers? That would be Kirsten. Kirsten. Perfect. How do you like all those questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I you were I thinking, boy, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> boy, I'm sorry I got this girl's number. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes we just never know who's calling from where, and it's sure. been kind of a day. So, uh, first been. of all, it, it has been. It has been. So I am thankful for many things, but one of those specifically is a roof over my head and food on the table for our family. And the second is the, is the job that, in or, that enables us to keep doing that. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, those are great things to be thankful for, aren't they? Absolutely. All right. Well, that was all I needed today. Yay. Well, you have an awesome day and a great Thanksgiving. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, so, um, so we had two examples here. And in the, the first one, so the first one, I used a current event that was going on, the heart lead vulnerability was uh, in all the mainstream media at the time. Um, for the, the one that we just heard with United Hope, the... Um, that was part of um, actually like a, a, a two-part uh, call uh, pretext that I had set up. And we actually did have a website that we made, a fake charity portal. Um, and for, for that, um, I actually had, so you, you never know, like the first call, was, she said, sure, here's my info. The second one that she definitely didn't, she wanted, to, she was asking all those questions and yeah, you know, she was looking things up, she's writing things down. Um, she was peppering me with questions immediately. So I had to have all of those, um, that background information uh, because if I genuinely was calling from United Hope or wherever, um, there are things I would know. Where is the company based? I would know that. I there you don't have you you have to be prepared for background questions like that. Um, there and and Kirsten that that name that I dropped was the name of the person 
uh, at that organization who, um, would, who would have been the right person. Um, somebody has asked what was gained from that. So that uh, one is kind of fun because what, what are you thankful for is like clearly not asking for credentials. I'm not getting anyone to click on anything. But when I call back a few days later uh, and say, hey, remember me? We talked about, I called to talk to you before Thanksgiving. Uh, we talked about what you were thankful for. Well, we got the portal up now and hey, could you just go there and, and check it out? So that's what that was, that was for. So that was, um, there was much more uh, going on with that one. Um, so, so yeah, you, you try something out um, and then you see what happens. Um, let's see what's next. And did it work? What did you learn? Because uh, sometimes things work and that might tell you something. Some, a lot of times they don't. Uh, sometimes when, uh, especially with uh, in-person or a phone interaction, somebody might say, hey, uh, IT only does, I know you're not IT because IT only does up, updates on the weekend. Hmm, okay, so I didn't uh, meet my objective on that call, but now I have uh, information that I can use to uh, improve my script and get smarter um, for my, the next call that I make. And sometimes you you try something, it doesn't work, and now you, you, you haven't met your objective, and you still have things that you need to uh, accomplish for your client. So what else? You know, what else can you do? Sometimes you have to uh, just apply a lot of uh, creative thinking and uh, keep just keep keep moving. And uh, and then at the, the end, as a consultant, you need to explain what happens to the client, um, because no matter what stories you walk away with, um, all of that work that you do, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you can't tell your, your client what, um, what happened, what you found, what the uh, issue is, or what the, the risk might be, to their uh, organization for things that are exposed um, and explain it in an understandable way, uh, it's, uh, then it's not meaningful. So that's really important. Uh, so report writing is probably like the least intriguing part of doing, doing that job, but it's extremely important um, to be able to communicate well and also to, to communicate things, you know, just kind of think through how you're explaining to people about what they're, what they're um, finding or what, or what you found or how. Um, I had several occasions where when I was getting into a, um, a secured location that it was actually my client, the, my, my actual sponsor who didn't did not know me and um, I tailgated in on them. So that's, you know, one of those things uh, that you want to be, um, uh, you know, kind of, kind of gentle about when you're then, then in the, um, uh, doing a report out on site with your client and like their supervisor or um, other people higher up. Uh, usually, if you're doing a social engineering contest, a lot of times your head of security or your CISO um, wants to be in the room to hear like the, the report out. Where did you go? What did you find? Um, so, so you, you know, you want to kind of keep that in mind. Um, and with social engineering, you know, you're dealing with people. So this is... Um, I mean, you're dealing with people no matter what job you have, but with this, you're manipulating people. And um, I've seen a few things go by on the, the feed asking about um, shaming or, or blaming or naming. And um, 
I feel very, very strongly that uh, when I call, um, when I do emails or, or phone calls, um, that uh, people not get uh, cited or, um, or punished for it because uh, genuinely uh, on any given day, anybody, any of us can fall victim to social engineering. Um, it has a lot to do with just how the human brain works. If um, you are running late for, for something and, you're, and maybe you're really tired, you're not feeling well, maybe you've just had a disagreement with a, a family member or you're really worried about somebody and um, you know, all of that, all of that takes up our bandwidth for critical thinking. And, um, and then you see something that uh, pop up in your email or you get a phone call that um, something uh, that something's wrong or it's surprising. When you have a strong emotion come up, it literally hijacks the part of your brain that allows you to lead with critical thinking. So, um, so I, I feel very strongly about that, that um, that should not result in somebody losing their job. Um, and, uh, so, and so also, um, likewise, when you're coming up with pretexts uh, and thinking about what you're going to do, um, personally, I never use uh, like intimidation or um, yelling or anger uh, or fear. I don't, um, that's not, it's not what I like to do. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's right to do that. It's also not necessary to, to treat people that way. Um, but you are breaking people's trust and you have to know that when you go into social engineering, you know, people, um, are going to think uh, it's kind of a downside is that people think you're grifting 24 um, seven. They think, you know, I'm not going to click My husband actually will even say, if I send him an email and say, Hey, there's a thing I want you to click. He'll even say, I'm not clicking a link you send me like, oh. <laughs> um, but it's legitimate. And I really need you to click it. So, um, so, so, you know, so it's important to think about what you're doing, the effect you're going to have on the people that you interact with. And, um, you know, also managing up is generally, that's a, a career track skill, uh, knowing about what, um, uh, making sure your client knows what you're doing and, um, and that. So here's a here's a few resources. I want to make sure I get to that. Um, there are a whole bunch. There's a lot. There's actually a lot of content out there. If you want to learn more about social engineering, um, there's some great books. So I highly recommend Robin Dreek's book. It's not all about me. Uh, Techniques for building rapport with people. Um, and that's a good, whether you want to do social engineering or just to be more effective in conversations that you have. Um, Chris Hadnagy has uh, several books out. There are a bunch of um, books about uh, physical um, pen testing as well and social, social engineering pen testing. Uh, Sands actually, in, in terms of the research, uh, has both a summit and a couple courses about that open source uh, intelligence uh, gathering. Uh, there's a conference called Layer 8, the Layer 8 conference that's uh, in Rhode Island, and they're all about uh, that uh, OSN and social engineering. So lots of great content. There's all kinds of um, videos, podcasts, there's, there's just like tons of stuff out there. So um, that is, so that's the main thing there. See, we've just got a couple minutes left in the, the track, but I will definitely um, go ahead and uh, I see that there's a, a lot of stuff happening in the, in the hallway. So I will hop over to the, the hallway to chat with 
with everybody. So thanks, and I hope that you have uh, an awesome time with the rest of the summit. You, Jen, so much for sharing. That's fascinating, fascinating stuff. I always love yep. seeing the, what I'd say that characterizes maybe the professional application of uh, a lot of these tactics versus, you know, what we're seeing with a lot of the attackers pulling a lot of the same things on us. Um, one question that came across in the Zoom Q&A before we break for lunch that I thought was really good um, is, oh, where to go now? Uh, it had to do with baselining and fingerprinting. Is there any kind of rough guess, you know, rule that you have in terms of surveying and watching and I guess surveilling uh, an organization that you're working with in order to establish a pattern of life or establish something that you can use to understand the normal flow of, of traffic or flow of people or, or just activities before you move into the phase where you're kind of crafting the approach you're going to take to exploit that? Like, is there any kind of rough rule you have along those lines? I, I try to find out as much as I can and not limit myself in terms of what seems important or not important. Uh, because sometimes you don't you don't know when you're doing your research what's going to help. Um, certainly, any kind of uh, information about people's daily routines or um, day in day in the life kinds of uh, sorts of information about people's jobs um, kind of helps. Uh, I do as much research if I'm doing an on-site uh, test. I do as much research as I possibly can before I get there. Um, I do want to do some in-person reconnaissance to just see how do people wear their badges, but you can maybe find that on social media as well. Um, what lunch places are nearby, coffee places that are nearby. Um, there's all kinds of stuff like that, but um, sure. I would say don't limit yourself. Absolutely. That's great, great advice. Um, you know, I, I, what I really have, I think appreciated most from, um, I guess, a holistic perspective on what you shared was your views on making sure that it's not, um, you know, uh, placing blame on the people at the company or, or your clients in this case, who kind of let their guard down. Uh, you know, after all, we are all human. And I, I, I'll be completely honest, I've received fishes that I look at and I'm like, you know, I really have to think about it. And it takes me, who you know, I do this stuff on a daily basis, a long time to really figure out is this legit or not. So, you know, I, I think that's an important takeaway for everybody, which is we can't just point fingers and say, oh, my gosh, how terrible, because we're all human. And at some point, someday, you mentioned a lot of the you know, psychological factors behind that that are going to weigh into people's, you know, letting that guard down so yeah absolutely and um i'll post another video link in the uh in the hallway um to a presentation i did at the uh, security awareness summit a, a few years ago that has um some other examples of things that are pretty tricky and it's sometimes um there are things that i think i would have clicked on that so <laughs> right yep absolutely <laughs> Well, cool. Then you add that to your catalog, right? Ooh, that's yeah. a good one. I'm going to remember this. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for taking your time to share with us today. Absolutely appreciate it. So much to take away. Um, we've got our, our email link up once again for everybody, as well as your hallway channel, which has been very active with lots of questions that I know people are excited to, uh, to get you into. Um, so thank you again. Appreciate your time. Right. Awesome. Thanks so much, Phil.